Hey guys, it's Meg. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how I mix up my counterculture DUI epoxy. So I've already gone ahead and I've measured out my part A and my part B. You want to make sure that you're measuring to a one-to-one -one ratio, meaning you want to make sure that each part A and part B measures out to be the exact same number. So I have about 20 mLs in this bottle and a cup and 20 mLs in that cup. So equaling them both together, adding them, it will add up to 40 mLs total of epoxy that we'll be using on our project today. So what you wanna go ahead and do is you wanna go ahead and I always like to start pouring my part B first because part B is a lot thinner than part A. And if you were to put part A first because the B is uh, so thin, the part B would just sit on top of part A because part A is thicker. Now, with doing part B first and then part A, you're allowing the part A, which is the thicker part, to sink to the bottom of part B, which is allowing you overall to get an even better mixture. So all I'm doing right now is I'm scraping both of, I'm gonna scrape both of my cups, part A and part B, into one container. And I like to use, you really can use anything. I use plastic cups, I use silicone cups, um, really whatever you wanna use, you can use whatever's your preference. Right now I'm using one of the silicone cups. And um, I'm a big scraper. I like to try to ensure that I'm getting every last drop out of my medicine cup just to make sure that I really am getting that true one-to-one -one ratio because you might not think you're leaving a lot of product left over in those cups if you don't scrape it, but you really do. And every drop is important. And I'm probably a little OCD when it comes to scraping out my cup. So I feel like I got all of part B out. So now I'm going to move on to my part A. And like I said, part A is a little thicker. Now, you might be wondering how I can tell the difference because they're both clear. You, every bottle, any supplier that you order from should have their bottles labeled part A and part B. Even once you pour it into the medicine cups, the only thing I do is you can see I mark my part A um, medicine cup that I'm going to use. I just mark it with the Sharpie. That way I never get them confused And because there's been times where I have done my part A first and then my part B. And not that it like makes a huge difference. I just feel like I get less bubbles when I do it part B, part A way. That's a lot of part A's and part B's in one sentence. So again, we're just scraping all of our part A out of our medicine cup, making sure we're scraping those sides really well. And you, can, you might also notice that I'm not scraping the side of my popsicle stick on the side of my um, silicone cup here. I'm using the side of my medicine cup to scrape it and letting it fall in the middle rather down the side. And that is also another thing I do to ensure that I'm getting all of that product out and into my silicone cup. I feel like when I this popsicle stick on the side of my cup, I'm losing product that's sliding all the way down. So that's just another little thing that I do. You don't have to do that. Of course, I always encourage all of my um, viewers, followers, anybody that's watching a video of mine to always find out what works best for you. Experiment. You don't have to do it the exact same way as, your fo as somebody else does because I'm going to tell you what, doing something different is going to set you apart from any and all the other creators. So... Now we got all of our part A and part B into one cup. I'm done with the popsicle stick. I don't want to use the popsicle stick anymore. 
The popsicle stick is wood, so wood has air in it. So if you're going to stir with a popsicle stick, chances are you're going to get more bubbles than you would if you were to stir with a silicone or a metal stir stick. I like to use little metal stir sticks. So now I'm going to go ahead and you can set a timer or you can just uh, round about it in your head. You want to make sure that you're in stirring for at least three minutes. Some people like to stir in a circular motion. I do not. I like to do it in a figure eight or a zigzag motion. And when I say a zigzag motion, this is what I mean. I mean back and forth. Just boop, 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 boop. Boop. Rather than a circular motion, I want to be making my stir stick go back and forth, just kind of moving it across the cup, back and forth, rather than going like this. I feel like it creates less bubbles, and that's just the way that I stir my epoxy. Now, I do have a video posted on the Counterculture DUI YouTube channel, so be sure to check that out. It's another um, how to stir your epoxy tutorial. So you can see I'm doing the figure eight motion, and that's basically I'm just drawing a figure eight in my epoxy. And then I'm going to go back to the zigzag motion. And you just want to do this for three minutes. You want to make sure that you're getting rid of the cloudiness and that your epoxy starts to clear up. Once you get rid of that fogginess and the cloudiness, you and start to see the clear epoxy again, then you know that you're getting close to being done. Once it's all clear, you don't have any little wisps you are going to be ready to apply your epoxy. You can wait till it warms up a few minutes. I don't like to wait because that's valuable working time that I could be using, working with the epoxy, mixing my mechas in, whatever I'm going to be planning on doing, using the epoxy. So I don't wait for it to heat up. In my experience, I feel like counterculture does better without heat before you mix it once you mix it up and you apply it to your project hitting it with a torch is going to eliminate any flames so that's why I say I mean any bubbles it's going to eliminate any bubbles that's why I say prior to applying it I don't like to heat it up before I measure it some people like to heat up part a I don't do that. Um, some people like to stick it in front of the heater once it's mixed up just for a minute. I don't do that. Some people like to heat up part A and part B. I don't do that. I just make sure my room is at 72 to 75 degrees and I have no problems. <clears throat> now, I am getting a few bubbles. I'm not worried about that. Um, I will be able to eliminate all of those bubbles with my torch. Now, I am going to do a circular motion. I do do a circular motion once in a while throughout the stirring just to make sure that I'm getting those sides scraped good because you want to make sure you're scraping your sides. Okay, guys, and today I'm actually using the medium velocity uh, epoxy, so it's a lot thinner than the regular artist resin, which I like a ton. If you guys haven't checked out the medium velocity from Counterculture, you guys really need to run over there and get you some. Test it out. See if you like it. I love it. I think it's great, especially for molds, because you get the same amount of work time, even a little bit more work time as you do with the artist resin, but you get to demold a lot sooner, just like the fast set. So 
again, guys, that's just me mixing up my epoxy. Those little bit of bubbles that you see in there, I'm going to pop them with my little itty-bitty torch right here. And that's it. Thanks for watching.